Well, welcome to the Post Sunday app. Thanks for joining us today. Um, today is going to be a little different PSA because Daniel's going to sing. Uh, uh, right after, right <laughs> after this, these messages. So, yeah, I had the someone, overcomer. Yeah, I had somebody mention to me that since you preach from First John five, four and five, victory over faith, and you had the word overcomer in every point, that there are quite a few Christian songs that have the word overcomer in them. Yeah, and that maybe you might have been willing to share a little ditty. And there's a there's a prominent one right now too that I heard a lot about once I sent out my notes. Okay, Th is that the Mandisa yeah. one you're talking about? Yes. Okay. Now. I feel bad because I, I quoted secular songs <laughs> last month or whatever. Yeah. I I don't know that song. Really? Yeah. Wow. If we weren't judging you already. Right. We are judging you now. <laughs> right. Now, yeah. Now, I, I kind of, I listened to it, I'm like, yeah, I kind of vague, maybe I've heard this song, but um, hmm. I changed the channel. I, yeah. I don't know. I don't know where to go with this. <laughs> Whenever I listen to Christian music, I'm I'm uh, pretty much listening to Spotify or Pandora. Okay. And so you've chosen. You've kind of sovereign grace music and stuff. Yeah. So to. okay. Now I listened to it and I just listened to it real quickly. Someone sent me the link and um, I I didn't I didn't catch any really bad theology just in a quick listen. But I was doing yeah. other things too. So maybe it's yeah. a yeah. It, it seemed like a it's a truth statement. I'm an overcomer. Yeah. You're an overcomer. I don't know how the song goes. Even I probably shouldn't talk about the song. But maybe, no, I'm not. Maybe maybe I'm not going to sing. I'm not going to sing. And okay. uh, yeah, one of these days, folks, yeah. we'll get Daniel Bennett to sing. You know what? There was a microphone mishap yesterday, okay. and I I was singing over. Oh, that's right. Over the mic. You mentioned that. Mike. Uh, not everyone heard it. It was just in the earpieces of the of the worship team, <laughs> and Mike said he heard this. All of a sudden, he heard this. Uh, these aren't necessarily his words, but this beautiful baritone. <laughs> and I thought, wow, Spencer really has brought it down a couple notches uh -huh. there. And he goes, I think that's Daniel singing. So wow. that's why the worship team looked a little like, what's going on you know, here? Yeah. Doing that there. You think we should do some questions yeah. at all? Sorry. Today? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So two questions. Okay. All right. So we probably took up some time here. So we have to rapid right, fire. You ready? I'm ready? Yeah. Okay. Uh, one question about be, being an overcomer. What steps can be taken to deal with something that I'm not able to overcome? So if I'm struggling with overcoming uh, sin in my life, um, what steps should I, should I take? What should I do? Yeah, so I think John gives us the answer there that it's, uh, we overcome not through our works. Uh, you know, we've, looked, we've talked about Colossians before where Paul talks about different methods people use, asceticism, legalism, uh, not gonna eat this, gonna eat this, and just legal, like those things are gonna be completely ineffective in dealing with our flesh. The only, th the only one who can deal with our flesh is, is Christ. And so mm -hmm. the, the process by which he's laid out is uh, for us to overcome the world through faith, and specifically faith in Jesus as, as the Son of God. And um, at times, I think that God has, or what I think God has called us to do is to continually uh, trust in him, even in the midst of our trials. And so, um, I, I'm, let's say let's say I'm struggling with the world and let's, let's say the area of materialism. As as I continually am aware of that struggle, and we'll, we'll, that's one of the other questions. Mm -hmm. As I become aware of that struggle, and we'll talk about how I become aware of that in just a moment. I continually turn that over to, to Christ and say, "Look, uh, and, and you know what? I did this even after my sermon yesterday. There was an area where I was I was thinking about the world and the pool of the world, my life, and I said." Um, Christ, uh, you're more valuable to me, Jesus, than, than, than this. And whatever you do in this situation, I'm going to trust you in, but I'm going to value you more than, mm -hmm. more than this circumstance working out the way that I, I want it to. Yeah, I actually wrote that down at the end of your second point. I tried to quote you here as I was typing furiously, but you cannot be an overcomer if you're not value Christ rightly. Yeah. As worth all surpassing. Yeah. And I, I had that story from uh, that, that, that uh, blogger where she talked about how um, mm -hmm. she kind of said the right response for a Christian if they found themselves in a situation with Abraham and, I, and a situation with Isaac would be to say, no, I'm not going to do that, God. Mm -hmm. And uh, whenever we know what it, that it's God telling us to do something, we, we do it. We don't know how things are going to work out. Our knowledge is limited. Whenever right. God tells us to do something, we obey because we value him more than, more than our own anything. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. so you, you mentioned we talk about how to know. Um, when you're struggling something. No, that's not how, what you said. 
Let me just read the question. Yeah. How, how do I know when something in my life had crossed the line to loving it? Yeah. So, so how do you know when you're in the midst of that struggle? Right. So the first question we were talking about, okay, what do I do when I realize that I'm falling in some area of the world? So how do I know that something's crossed from just kind of enjoying it to taking a place of idolatry? Mm -hmm. And, you know, our biblical counseling classes, I think, do a great job talking about this. How do, you, how do I know when something's an idol? And, and maybe you can add to this too, but I'd say uh, the, the line that we've, we've heard repeated often is, when I'm willing to sin to get something, I know that it's become an idol. I'm, I'm willing to sin in order to obtain it. Or if I'm going to sin when I don't get what I want. Both mm -hmm. of those are kind of indications, oh, this is, this is taking up a, a place of idolatry in my life. Or when I look at the fruit that, that a desire for something produces in my life, uh, James 4 talks about that, and I see anger, or quarreling, uh, jealousy, um, distress, lack of joy. If I see these fruits in my life, I can, I think you talked about this in your parenting class yesterday, someone mm -hmm. was telling me, that I can look back and say, okay, there's, there's something causing that. There's some idol that's taken up residence in my life. Something's passed from something that I've just enjoyed to something that I love in a, in a way that's idolatrous. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the way I talk about in the parenting class it's a different way of saying what you already said is when that desire becomes a demand mm, and yeah. helping our kids understand that. And we have to understand that ourselves that every time a desire becomes something I must have, yeah. then I've moved from a, a help, what couldn't be a healthy desire to an unhealthy yeah. worship of that desire, which makes it an idol. It's good. So yeah. like it. Heard, heard good things about the parenting class, like I said. And well, it, yeah, it was, you know, it's, it's great for Casey and I to, to help lead that discussion because then we have to evaluate our own yeah. parenting and realize yeah. there's some adjustments we need to make yeah, too. And good. we'll do more of these gospel light classes too as, as good. we uh, go forward. That's so, awesome. So thanks Daniel. Yeah, thanks. Thank ben. you too for tuning in to the post Sunday app. We hope you have a great rest of your day.